All right. We are two minutes past the hour. Um, thank you for calling in and enjoying an afternoon or evening with us. Um, we'll try to make this as engaging as possible, but this is Whatever with Rever, where we get to talk about whatever. Um, this one, we are going to focus on navigating the fundam fundamentals of Rever. Um, so we're going to keep it pretty high level, um, do a basic overview over the platform. We're going to start in the app, um, and then we'll dive into the website a little bit, and then we'll open up the floor for questions. Uh, at the end, and we can dive deeper into anything you guys want to learn more about, um, and we're happy to answer anything along those lines. So with that, let's get started. This is our crew. Um, I'm Bjorn Bredesen. I'm the Senior Business Manager here at Rever. Uh, on the opposite side of the table from me uh, is our Senior Product Manager, Paul Fleur. Um, calling in from Idaho is Kyle Nagel. He's our Community and Content Coordinator. And then calling in from California is Maha Blackwood. She has our Rever Pro Support Specialist. If you're writing into customer support, you may hear from Maha. And she's going to be answering questions in the Q&A section throughout this session. Um, so throw those in there. So just a brief Rever history. Um, since this is the basics class, uh, Rever came from the French word meaning to dream. Uh, we felt it was fitting because we want to inspire motorcycle riders. Uh, it was co-founded by Justin Bradshaw and Mark Rebke in 2014. You may have heard of Justin Bradshaw. He also helped with Butler Motorcycle Maps, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, he's also starred in some of the Backcountry Discovery Routes films, but that's kind of where Rever started. Uh, the app was launched initially in 2015 as Ride Social um, and was part of the Boater, Butler Motorcycle Maps um, company. Uh, it eventually split off. We went more digital. They stayed paper. And then in November of 2020, Rever was acquired by Komodo Holdings, which owns Revzilla, Cycle Gear, JNP Cycles, and Common Tread. Um, so we're friends with all those guys there. And since 2014, we have connected with over 2 million riders from around the world, and we're stoked that you are one of them. So why would you use Rever? Well, Rever is a dedicated GPS app built specifically for motorcycle riders. Uh, we think that thoughtful technology can make power sports more enjoyable, accessible, and safer for everyone. And we want you to ride as much as possible. So everything we're doing is to help you get on, on your bike and enjoy it in the best way you can. I'm going to kick it over to Kyle to go through today's focus and some notable terms. Yeah, thanks, Bjorn. And uh, I appreciate the um, origin story there. Everybody loves a good one. And I see that we have many people returning. But for those of you who are new, you may not have noticed um, Bjorn and Paul's new titles. Well, definitely Bjorn's new title. Um, so yeah, that's in part because Justin and Mark have, um, moved on to their next project and that was all planned out. Um, that was always going to happen after we were acquired, but congratulations to Bjorn and Paul who have worked really hard to make Rever better. Um, and I know the ship is in good hands and I'm excited for what's to come. Um, so with that, I'll do the day today's focus. So we're going to break down the basic features and functionality that Rever has to offer. Um, we're going to demonstrate how to leverage the app and the web platforms to discover, plan, um, record, navigate, and share. And then we'll answer your questions live. Um, so some notable terms, the discover section in the app and on the website. So in the app, Discover is the binocular icon, and we'll show you that once we get into the demo. But anyway, that's the menu that allows you to filter curated routes and segments. Um, I broke that out between the two because there are segments in Rever, um, and a segment is a section of road that has been rated based on characteristics that are ideal for riding. So examples of segments are the Butler, content and as we'll show you the AI route scout content that we have. Um, and then a ride in Rever is any track or route that's saved. It has a unique ID. Um, so to differentiate that from a segment, um, a ride can be shareable. Um, it's something you either create or find in Rever. A track 
um, which when you're navigating, we call a follow route line, is an ordered series of location points that do not require further processing or calculation. So a track is a static line. Um, when you create or plan your route, the track is going to stay as it is. And opposed to that is a route, which is an ordered list of waypoints representing a series of turning points leading to a desti destination. And a route with several waypoints can actually change um, in between the waypoints. So when you're navigating and using get directions, turn by turn directions, um, that route can be optimized or um, diverted if you if you get off the track. Um, so it's more of a dynamic thing. And then a deep link, it directs users to um, a ride in the app if you are on a mobile device. And if you're on a computer, it'll direct you to our URL website. Um, so it's kind of a, a smart link there that um, identifies whether you're using a mobile device or a computer. Cool. And so with that, I think we're going to go ahead and pull up the app and start to dive in. Um, I'll do my best to show where I'm clicking. I have a cursor. Um, I have an external mouse. Um, sometimes it gets a little tricky uh, to use the mouse on a phone. Um, but here we are. This is the app. Um, I'm assuming most of you are familiar with it. When you open up the app, once you sign in, this is where it will take you. This is the map tab. Um, we have five different tabs in Rever. We have the feed, which is going to be your ride feed. We have some information there, our uh, articles. Participate, which is where you're going to connect and um, compete. Uh, map, which is where you're going to do most of your riding out of. Profile, um, which is where you're going to find all your stats. And then if you need any help, questions, FAQs, anything like that, you'll find it in that last tab. Um, so we're going to start at the beginning of a beginning of a user journey. So when you're going out on a ride, you're like, okay, well, where the hell am I going to ride? I, I don't know where I want to go ride, or maybe you don't care where you go ride and you just want to go get lost. We have a discover section. So as Kyle mentioned, we have the binocular looking icon in the upper right here. Um, once you click into here, we have it broken out kind of by riding style or surface type. So you have your paved routes. You have your adventure, which is going to be those mixed surfaced routes and roads, which is are great for if you're traveling long distances and hopping on and off road. Um, and we have off road specific routes. Um, I'm not going to go through every subsection, but I'll cover a brief overview. Um, incredible roads are your Butler motorcycle maps. If you've never heard of Butler motorcycle maps, they are roads that have been ridden and rated on how scenic and how twisty they are. Um, so when you toggle those on, it's going to show you pretty kick-ass rides. Um, they aren't in every state or anywhere around the world outside the U.S., um, but there are um, a ton of those in the U.S., and we have a solution um, outside of that. Uh, moving over, featured, these are anything curated by us, community curated. Um, those are routes that have been submitted by user, from users like you, um, and then we review them, and then publicly or publicly post those um, in community curated. So that way they're vetted and they should be kick-ass rides. Uh, that being said, we do have a large backlog. Um, so uh, we haven't got to all of them. So if you have submitted one and it hasn't been accepted yet, uh, it should come in the future. Same thing for like adventure. We have those incredible roads from Butler, which are like dirt roads featured, dirt roads, hard ADV, backcountry discovery routes and community curated. The last one, off-road, uh, single track, two track, high clearance, four by four, dirt roads, and MX tracks. Um, when it comes to discovering a route, um, I'm going to go to paved and I'm going to toggle on Butler maps. So I'll just click in there and then you just click on each one and you can toggle on as many as you would like. And you can see these are just those segments that Kyle mentioned. Um, search this area, they're populating in, um, we're in Colorado here. There are quite a few, um, there may not be some in other areas like Kansas. And then if you want a full route, you can go into featured and then you can find these purple routes in here, and then you can check it out. 
and by swiping through the cards. Yeah, go ahead. Bjorn, what uh, differentiates those segments versus those rides or routes? Yeah, good question. So the segment um, is just a rating system and a static line on the map. Uh, it's a layer on the map, whereas the route you can click on um, and pull up as an actual ride. So these are the ride cards. You can swipe through these to find rides in a certain area. Um, you can zoom to different air, different locations to find routes. Um, so let's go down towards like Vegas. We'll zoom in. And there's some rides around Vegas. Um, like I said, you could toggle on as many of as these as you want. Um, so if you want all of them so you can find rides in your area, that is definitely the way to do that. Any questions on Discover before I move on? Um, yeah, I thought, <clears throat> Kyle, why don't you just give us the 30 second spiel on what uh, the BDRs are? Yeah, so if you haven't heard of backcountry discovery routes before, um, it's an adventure style route. So that means mixed surfaces. You are going to be on some highways, granted smaller um, scenic highways and byways, but then you're going to be off road for large sections of it too. Um, most of these routes uh, cover just one state, although on the East Coast, um, those of you familiar with riding there, you can cover a lot of ground quickly. So they actually go through multiple states, but essentially they take you through um, these states or these areas or regions the back way, the back country way. We don't create these routes. They are created by the nonprofit organization Backcountry Discovery Routes. And they have a website and all the planning information there if you want to learn more. But we do uh, elevate that content in our um, platform so that people can discover it and navigate those. So what Bjorn's pulling up right there is the Colorado um, BDR, and he's looking at the sections. So he went into Adventure and then BDR and toggled on all sections. You can toggle on each individual BDR route in its entirety, or you can look at the um, the alternate routes and the extensions and all of that stuff. Everything that they've created is in the app. Um, and when you do go to navigate those, it's important to save them for offline use. Um, we may cover that when we're going through a route. In fact, we can just cover it right now. Um, Bjorn pulled up the ride card there. So if you press that button, you will download the route to your phone so that it's saved on there locally. And what that allows you to do is go out of cell service, um, go off the grid, and you'll still have that route so you can navigate it. And then last question, Kyle, um, how often are we updating the BDR routes? They're pretty much always as up-to-date as you can get, right? Yeah, we work closely with BDR, so we're always updating that. Um, the, the surest way to find things like temporary closures um, is to go to the BDR website because, you know, we just had Hurricane Helene last week, and when things like that happen, um, routes get closed right away. So um, for emergency closures like that and stuff, go to the BDR website. Otherwise, when a route is changed or updated, it always comes to us, and we update that um, as soon as possible. Cool. And then... Um, I'll show real quick since I'm here with this Colorado back route. Um, and if you do ride an adventure bike, you, you should know what BDRs are, um, specifically because they're really kick-ass and great ways to see a state. Um, but say you want to ride this, um, we're in Colorado, we're about midway in Colorado here. And if we wanted to ride this, especially for off-road stuff, um, you go to ride it and then follow route line. Um, as you can see, the green is taking you away. This isn't built pinned with waypoints through here. Um, it's This is routing me around to here and then back. So you would go follow route line, um, and then the route line is out, and there's just a static line on the map, um, and the layer still displays there. But there we are, and there's the backcountry discovery route. Yeah, so what you're pointing out there is a difference between a track and a route. So the track stays the way that it was built, and a route 
will go through waypoints or the optimized way. Cool. And go ahead. While we're looking at rides, would you mind just showing us how you would reverse that route? Um, so here's a ride that I found in Discover. Um, under the three dots, um, you can edit this ride. Um, and then there's the reverse button right here. And then it'll reverse all those points. I'll show that again real quick. Actually, it's going to exit me out. Um, three dots, edit ride, reverse. Okay. Going back out, um, one more thing to cover with uh, Discover. Um, I'm going to clear out all of these. So I mentioned Butler Motorcycle Maps, super cool feature, um, but you may live in an area like Minnesota that may not have the high quality roads that Colorado may. Um, we just introduced this new feature. Um, it's called AI Route Scout. Um, and you can toggle this on. Um, and AI Route Scout will populate roads. Um, Kyle, do you want to actually explain it since it's your tool? Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to. So uh, AI Route Scout is super cool. Um, we used uh, AI generative technology and we trained it on what a good motorcycle road looks like. And so what you're seeing here is um, sort of a gradient rating system. So the cooler the temperature, the cooler the color, um, the more chill the road is, it's going to be a little bit straighter, um, not as scenic, not as twisty, um, which is the same thing as saying it's going to be straighter. But it also shows you, um, so an unbroken line there, a, a segment on there, is supposedly supposed to be um, not impeded by traffic light, lights or stop signs or stuff like that. So if you find a really long segment there, it should be something that you don't have to stop on. I mean, those are those are kind of the good roads to find for motorcycling. And what you can do with this AI Route Scout, which we have not vetted them all because there's thousands of, there's tens of thousands of them, um, but that's what's exciting about it is you can go out and kind of build your own route over the top of those and go explore them for yourself. You may find some unpaved roads, um, but these all should be legally accessible roads. These segments show up in, in um, traffic data websites. So yeah, these should be not private, but just always proceed with caution. Um, and yeah, using these segments, you can build some pretty cool um, routes. Yeah, like we said, we don't have these everywhere. Um, we populated a few states that were lacking in content. Um, and we'll continue adding more. So if you don't see your state, um, just just buckle up and wait. Um, we'll, we'll get there. Um, and I'll show how to turn that on. Uh, again, the map settings up here in the upper left. Um, and then AI Route Scout. You just toggle this to on. Yeah. And currently we have the Midwest covered. Um, we'll expand from there. But we wanted to make sure to get that content out. <laughs> yeah. One thing to mention, too, is... Uh... We won't be aiming the AI Route Scout tool at anywhere where we have Butler Maps. Um, those tend to be, the Butler Maps tend to be in like the premier riding areas of the country. Um, so this tool is meant to, you know, in places that aren't the best riding in the country, there's still great roads. So this will help you just at a glance find the best roads uh, in your area if there's no Butler content. Cool. Moving on, keeping it rolling. Um, we're going to dive into planning. Paul, do you want to go over the routing engines? I would love to. <clears throat> um, cool. So in Rever, we have three separate routing engines. We're going to start at the bottom because that's kind of the most straightforward routing engine. This is just straight A to B. It's going to be kind of similar to a Google Maps type of an experience. You can just drop it waypoints or give it addresses. Um, and it will build you the fastest route between those two points. As we said, you can do up to 25 waypoints and still do turn-by-turn -turn directions, while, but turn-by-turn -turn is a pro feature. 
And then you can also follow sure. route line with that as well. Um, and then that also has functionality to avoid highways, avoid tolls, or avoid ferries, um, which could come in handy if you're checking out the AI route scout up uh, up in the north there. Um, and then <clears throat> next up on the list is one step up of um, complexity and also radness, I guess, if we're being honest. Um, so the twisty routing engine is algorithmically driven and you give it two points or as many points as you want, and it'll plot the twistiest possible route um, between those two points. Um, it's kind of nice because you can still use turn by turn with that. Um, but if you're not trying to spend all day building the perfect route for yourself, um, the twisty routing engine is definitely something you should check out. It is a pro feature, um, but you know, you can make a super awesome route with like, you know, I guess Bjorn, Bjorn will show us right now. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so if we were going to go down to Denver the quick way with the old AB routing engine, we would definitely just take I-70 the whole way. Um, it's not a bad road as far as highways go, but there's probably a cooler, twistier way to get there. And let's see uh, what the tool spits out. There you go. Um, so this is going to be a much, much more fun ride. Is of course, a lot longer than if you just took I-70, but it's going to be a lot more fun. And, you know, this is probably roads that none of us have actually been on. Um, and, you know, in a click of a button, you can uh, make whatever you want. And as I said, you can add more waypoints. So if that was a little bit too far for you, you could drag that line down or put a waypoint in the middle there to try and keep it from going like way off um, into the into the mountains. <clears throat> and then finally uh, is the advanced off-road planner. <clears throat> um, so this is going to be kind of a niche tool for planning roads sorry, planning routes over like complex or seriously off-road type of terrain. Um, so the way the mapping tools work <laughs> is open street maps is kind of what everything's based on. And you can think of that as like Wikipedia, but for road data. Um, so <clears throat> essentially like Google Maps or our typical A to B routing, there's certain road classes that it just cannot route over. Um, this is a great example. This is just right up the road from us. Um, this is Coffee Pot Road, and it's a it's a reasonably good road. You know, you could probably take a Camry on it, um, but because of the way it's identified in the OSM data, it just can't be routed over um, by typical mapping technology. So what this tool is doing is just using geometry to try and snap between those two points to anything that exists in OSM. So it's actually, originally this technology was built to clean up GPX tracks after the fact. Um, so it's not able to handle like, you know, if Bjorn right now went 15 miles out there, it's gonna be too complicated for this thing to try to match up that geometry. So here you go. So if he now goes back closer, um, he will be able to get that to work. Um, so this is not a tool for building 500 mile routes. It's going to get old quick. Um, but there's certain times where there's no other tools that can build over this stuff. Um, so if you're looking to get way out into the sticks and you're having trouble planning, definitely try out the advanced off-road planner. Um, one other thing to mention with that, if you were going to ride from Denver to this road, which is like over two hours, you would make two routes for that. You want to have one route that's probably A to B or maybe twisty if you have enough time that'll get you, you know, to about dot Cerro here that you can see at the bottom right of the map. And then you would kick off a second ride that would be the cool off-road one that you can only build with the advanced off-road planner. And uh, sorry, I talked about that for way too long, but it's I'm great. I'm a nerd. Yeah. Um, and we just had a quick question on how we access that. Um, so there are two ways. Uh, First way is you can just click on this S icon, which is basically uh, two waypoints getting linked together. Um, and then that opens up the three different engines. You can also import GPX files through here or go find your planned routes. Um, otherwise you can just click on the map and hold, and then it will open that up and place a point there. Um, moving on, oh, go ahead. 
Bjorn, if you were going to build a route and you wanted to use turn by turn directions, um, which, which option would you be most likely to choose there? And you were going to add like 10 to 20 waypoints to it. Yeah. I probably use, um, a to B guidance. Um, it really depends on what kind of route it is. Um, I would build using A to B guidance and maneuver it exactly how I would like. Um, and when we get to the website, I can do it because it's a little easier for me to click on there um, than using this mouse. Um, but I would use A to B and then manipulate how I'd want to ride the route. Um, and I can show a show a ride when we get to the website. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, simplest thing in Rever that you can do, just hit record. Um, that allows you to just record where you went and then you can go back and look at it. Maybe you found a super kick-ass ride um, or road that you've never found before and you want to go back and navigate it. Well, then you have a record of it. Um, one thing that's also cool while we're sitting in the map, um, we have 3D maps. Um, and then when you also record a ride, we have a 3D flyover that shows you a virtual navigation through your route. When you're done recording, you just hit stop, finish, and then you would add your ride details. You can add photos, mark it as private, submit it to Discover. If it's a really cool ride and you have photos in a description, submit it to Discover, and then just hit save. This has no data, so I'm hitting delete. While we're here in the map and recording, uh, there are different ways that you can set up your uh, map here. And I have settings on there that aren't actually stock settings. Um, but you can go into the map settings and adjust exactly how you would like. I typically run satellite mode. Um, Kyle runs outdoors, I believe, or land use. Land use is cool for like when you're camping because you can camp on BLM anywhere. Um, I use it even like when I have my, my truck and trailer. Um, and then you can render the map style in 3D. We talked about route scout already. You can add points of interest. So if you're competing in a POI challenge, um, we're not going to cover challenges this go. Um, but you can overlay those on the map. We have campsites from the dirt, fuel, cycle gears, um, restaurants. You can overlay the weather radar, um, wind, storm cells. I should, probably should turn that on to check out how that hurricane's progressing. PDF maps, that's a pretty high level feature, but you can import any PDF map into Rever. Um, but these are the important ones in my opinion. I like to be able to show the zoom buttons. Um, that way when I'm riding, I can one finger adjust my zoom just depending on the speed. Um, it will auto zoom, um, but you can manipulate it using those zoom buttons. So I have that always toggled on. And then if you're using follow route line, you can adjust how, how wide, uh, the actual line is. And then last but not least, you can download the offline map region. All right, next part of the journey, navigate. I'm going to go into feed and go find one of my rides. So here's the feed, clicked here. And then under my rides, I can drop this down. And then you have your favorite rides, your tracked rides, planned rides, offline rides. You can see any of your friends' rides where they're out riding. Um, this is really cool to overlay on a map. I'm going to go to planned rides. I don't actually know which... Right, it was the last one I planned. Um, let's go the road to Devilstone with dirt. So this is a ride that I built to get up to Devil's Tower um, for an event. And I'll click on that ride. It shows you where that navigates. Um, this is the ride details page. There are a few settings or options here. You can favorite this ride in the upper right. And I'll just click favorite. Uh, under the ellipsis. You can edit those ride details. You can save for offline use. And for this one, I did have to save it for offline use because I was fully out of cell service when I got into this zone. Um, I don't think I can zoom, roll down. And then when you're ready to navigate, you just hit ride it. Uh, Kyle went over these earlier, but the difference between follow route line and get directions Follow route line is a blue static line on the map. It will always be the route that you lay out because it is not recalculating based on your riding, um, your riding behavior. So as you can see, there is a difference here. I don't have a waypoint probably pinning this, this route 
to Douglas over here. So it's giving me the most optimized route between these two points because this is probably dirt. So I could go back and edit this ride if I wanted to go add that waypoint to ensure that I had turn by turn for that. I prefer navigating with follow route line. I don't really like the noise in my mouth or my mouth in my ears anyways. Um, so I click follow route line and boom, there's the blue static line on the map. Maybe I wanted turn by turn two and I can click that. And then it'll overlay on top of the follow route line. Um, and then it'll give you the verbal directions telling you to turn left, turn right. And it'll give you, you know, all the stats, 17 hours of riding, 563 miles. That's pretty high because it's a lot of dirt. So it calculates pretty slow. Um, and then I'll get there tomorrow morning. If you're using turn by turn navigation and you have a bunch of waypoints in there, um, say you miss one while you're riding, maybe your planning wasn't as clean as you would like it to be. And you place the waypoint off the road and you blow by it and it's rerouting you back. Um, in the lower right here, you can click skip waypoint. And this will allow you to skip past that waypoint. Um, say you're starting in the middle of a route. Say I started halfway through this and I just launched this. You can skip the waypoints all the way to the point to where you want to start from as well. Um, that should be it for turn by turn. I want to save some time so we get into the website. Um, but this is the follow route line. It does have directional arrows on there um, to show you which way to go. And blue static line on the map. If you're ever having an issue where you're like, well, I'm riding, but I don't know why my map's not following along with me, you can always hit this button in the lower right and this will recenter to your location. Same thing, stop, finish, and delete for now, just for now. Um, last thing I wanna cover in the app, and I'll be brief with this one, say I'm going out on a ride and I want someone else to follow along on it. Um, I wanna make sure they have the route just in case they get lost. I would hit the share arrow, and then you can share an image, but I would share a link to this ride as Kyle covered, if someone clicks this on a phone, um, it'll take them to the app. And if they don't have the app, it'll take them to the app store to download it. And then it'll take them into this ride. So sharing a link is a good way to share routes across. All right. Can you see my screen, Kyle? Yep. Cool. All right. Here's the website. Um, pretty basic looking at this moment. Do you want to just do a generic overview as brief as possible with this? Yep. So I'm going to cover the map page here, which is the first page that comes up. Um, the discover content that we mentioned before is a drop down right there where Bjorn clicked it in the upper left. Um, and that goes through the same categories, paved, adventure, and off-road. Um, it's got the Butler segments as well as all of our route content that you can find in there. Um, what's nice about the website for planning is, um, it's a little bit, It obviously it's a bigger screen, so it's easier to, to kind of see where you're going on it. But also it's much easier to just drop a pin over those segments. Uh, and by pin, I mean drop a waypoint over those segments or um, over route content, over rides. And you can plan your own ride, your own customized ride um, over the top of some of this information, which is really nice. Over on the right side of the screen, you have your compass or your directional arrow. You can um, click to zoom there as well. Down below that, or you can also just scroll and zoom. Down below that, you have the uh, map options and satellite will allow you to see things in 3D. Um, this is super helpful when, especially if you're like wanting to know how steep something is or um, how gnarly it might be, or how scenic something is. You can often tell how scenic a ride is going to be just by popping that into 3D and um, seeing if it goes along a ridge line or along some water or something like that. And then below that is a little button. And I'm not going to dive into this too much, um, but I do want to clarify that um, we provide kind of the planning and the route and the navigation. Um, capabilities, but Mapbox actually does um, the mapping information and they get a lot of their information from OpenStreetMaps, which 
has over a million contributors worldwide. So if you ever see an issue with the map, you can click that button down there in the bottom right that says map box um, or or rather uh, open street maps and you can add that information. You can go to improve this map and um, you can help contribute and they'll vet the information and then they'll add it if they deem that to be correct. So yeah, we have it in A to B planning mode right now. Um, Bjorn has the Butler segments on the map. Um, let's go ahead and hop over to Discover and put a couple of favorite routes up there too, or just put the favorite routes. Featured. Yep, featured. Thank you. <laughs> um, and hover over some of those features. Perfect. So there's a Rider Magazine um, contributed ride right there. And if you don't know much about them, they put together awesome rides all across the country and I think across the world as well, but mostly in the U.S. So yeah, scroll into Denver there. Um, and let's say you're starting from a cycle gear. Um, we didn't really cover this yet, but you can put PO POIs on the map as well, points of interest. So Bjorn is selecting a cycle gear uh, POI there. And that's just a great meeting spot if you're going to build a, a ride for a group. So we're going to start there. Drop a pin, drop a wait. If it's not clicking, if it's not clicking, you have to switch back to create route because um, well, you can't do it while you're in Discover. Yeah. Just FYI. And he zoomed in really close so that um, so that the uh, waypoint was dropped actually where he wants it on the street there. If you are zoomed further out and you drop a bunch of waypoints, they might end up on back alleys or on an off ramp going the wrong direction, stuff like that. So it's always good to zoom in and place them precisely. Um, and we want to get to some G2 and G1 roads here. So Bjorn's already dropping the waypoints that are going to take us over that. Um, and he's spacing out waypoints pretty good. I always like to say, um, if you're planning on using turn-by-turn -turn directions, if you don't want the route to recalculate on you, then try to pick waypoints where it's going to be the most obvious way. If you did it on Google Maps, it would take you down that street. Um, try to place waypoints. I hope that makes sense to you. But um, yeah, so now we've got a nice little route here. And we're just going to go ahead and save this. And you can add a ride name, which helps to differentiate it between other things um, in your planned rides. You can add a description. If you are planning to invite other people on this ride, you might want to let them know what's going on with that route. Um, and then there's an option to put a ride date in there. And, uh, or rather, it's not an option. You, you have to put a ride date in there. You can just select today. But what this does is it prioritizes your rides um, in your folders. So if you want rides to show up in a certain order, um, then put mark them according to the date. You can choose a vehicle for it if you want to. Um, that can help you track what rides you do on certain motorcycles. And then you choose a surface type. Um, now the surface type is very important for the next thing I'm gonna talk about, which is if you're creating a ride that you want to submit to be a part of our um, community curated rides, it's really important that you get that surface type correct um, because we'll either add it to paved or adventure based on whether it's a mixed road or a paved road. We want all the paved content to be actually paved. So make sure you get that part of it right. We'll try to double check it best we can. Um, so yeah, and now Bjorn's ready to save it. But if he did want to submit this for Discover, he'll go back into the ride details there. At the bottom of that page, there's a submit ride for discovery. You just toggle that on and it is going to require that you include a photo. Uh, this should be something that gives people an idea of what the ride looks like, what an appropriate bike for the ride is like, um, those kinds of things. 
weird and wacky things you might see on the ride. Those are the kinds of things we're looking for. And then, yeah, now he's going to save it. And you have a couple of options for sharing this out now if you want to. So um, if you have other people who use Rever, uh, one of the best ways is to share a deep link. And so that chain link icon there, um, you can copy and paste that. You can text the deep link out. You can email it. Um, uh, whatever messaging service you want to use, you can get that out there. Um, if you are writing with people who don't use Rever and they use a GPS device like a Garmin, you can send out the GPX file. Um, you just export GPX and choose track line. So somebody asked earlier, um, they typically export the GPX file of their Garmin and the Garmin just recalculates the route and gets rid of all the waypoints except for the start and the destination. Um, what you wanna do is export the track. It's gonna give all the waypoints that you included as well. Um, but when you pull that up in your Garmin, it will come up as a track and then you can convert that to a trip. And we do have a, a video showing how to do that. So I won't get into the weeds, um, but you start as a track and then you can convert it to a trip in your Garmin. Um, and sure. you'll just want to turn off auto recalculate. So that's sharing a GPX file. We've showed you how to um, share the deep link and then also how to submit to community curated. Another thing that you can do with this ride, um, if you have a community, if you build a community in Rever, you can add this ride to the community. There's a bunch of use cases for communities, but. And we didn't cover communities per se. Um, we have other webinars online um, that have gone over communities more in depth. Uh, mm -hmm. Like we said, we'll keep this one pretty surface level. I know we went through this. Um, we try to take our time, but it's recorded and you can check in um, later on YouTube and 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 go back and rewatch it if you have any questions on that. Um, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, first of all, we're going to First of all, thank you for being here um, and hanging out with us. We appreciate that. Um, we're stoked to help you get the most out of your rides. Um, we're going to go ahead and just start answering some of the questions in the Q&A section. Um, so feel free to ask away and we'll stick in here and ask, answer questions. So is it possible to plan a route on the River website and ride that route with the mobile app? Yes. We didn't actually mention this. Um, specifically, but you can see I built a ride on the website. We built this ride. And as soon as I hit save, this linked right to my app. So when I switch back to my app, I'll show you and I'll, where this ride is living. But as long as you have the same account that you're signed into on both platforms, um, you'll be able to link those together. No problem. It, it auto links. Let me see if there's another one on the website. Uh, if you can't sign in on the website, same email and password as the app. If you have issues, hit up support at rever.co and that will be Maha helping you out. Uh, Here's a good question, Bjorn, um, that we didn't talk about, but um, Steve is asking about a road in their area. Um, when they try to plan over it, um, it doesn't allow, the, it says the route just backtracks and it doesn't allow them to plan over that road. So how would you overcome that on the website here? Good question. So saying it doesn't want to, maybe there's a bridge out or something or it thinks there is. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm an A to B and I'm going to place a few points and I'm pretty zoomed out. I wouldn't plan ever like this. Um, and say I'm right here and I want it to get to here. That's actually probably a really bad example, but um, I want to get to this area, um, but it's not letting me plan through here. So there's a, a, a way you can get around that. Um, there's this pencil icon. It's called the polyline tool. You just click on the pencil um, and you can build in this route manually with straight lines. Um, this is why I said it's a bad example because I picked so many corners. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's just going to be straight lines. And then once you toggle that off, it will snap back to the road. 
Yeah, perfect. So that's for just like one road out of your whole route that that makes it not connect. Um, if you were going to plan a whole off-road route, you would want to use the ADV, ADV planner because then it actually will snap to what it thinks that road is. Cool. Um, one other thing on the website, I just saw a question about this. Um, let's go to discover. Um, okay. Discover is here. How do I find this ride? How do I click on this ride? Um, it doesn't let me click on it. Um, well, if you zoom out on this web page a little bit, like just in decrease, it pops up on the side. Um, that's just a bug that we got to fix. And right. then, uh, so there's North pass and then you can click on this ride via here. And you can also take this ride and hit save as, and that adds a copy into your profile and you can manipulate it exactly how you want as well. Back in the app. Um, if you want the follow route line and, uh, the turn by turn, go ride it, follow route line. And then you just go back to your ride under feed, ride it, fall, uh, get directions now. And then they'll both be on the screen. Um, I'm going to exit out of turn by turn. And this is what I was explaining when I messed up. Um, but you can always use these zoom buttons that you can toggle on in map settings. I'll show you where to do that real quick again in these map settings. Scroll down to the bottom. Sorry, my scroll's not working. And then show zoom buttons will allow you to toggle those buttons on and then you can adjust manually adjust your zoom um, with one hand. Um, Someone asked, okay, you planned the ride on the on the oh, on the <laughs> website and you want to find it on the app. You're gonna go from the map tab to feed, drop down the arrow to my planned rides. And I'm down in the bottom. Let me refresh this. And then there's the ride I planned on the website, synced automatically with that. Um, showed how to reverse a route. What exactly does a favorite option do? Um, it allows you to kind of organize these rides. Um, so say you just want, you're going out on a weekend and you have four different rides and it allows you to just save those in your favorites. Um, and then you can just drop down this arrow and easily find them under this section here. Um, and there's one more functionality of favorite. Go for it. So if you're going to use Apple CarPlay, um, which disclaimer, we haven't updated it in a little while, but I did just use it this weekend. Um, and, and I created a route. What you have to do is save it as a favorite there. And then, uh, you'll be able to pull that up in Apple CarPlay, um, and navigate with your custom route. Yep. That's the only way to get a route in there pretty much. Um, just because Apple CarPlay is a simple form of your, your phone, it, it limits the amount of things you can have in a list. Um, what else we got? Ooh, I see a good one. Um, how can I search communities near, near me? Um, like we said, we didn't really go over communities, but they're a good way to like make a folder of rides or connect with other riders. So in the participate tab, which is kind of where challenges, events, and communities live, you can come to this events nearby kind of tab, which is powered by our friends at the knuckle. Um, they kind of populate all the events into river. If you go to this like three bar icon and toggle on communities and toggle off events, map view and hit display. You can come in here and let's go to Denver because that's somewhat close. It search this area and they're, they're loading. My phone's throttled with the webinar, but the, the communities, pretty pop good. yeah, the communities will populate in here. 
Um, and to tie this into another question that we have on here, James asks or says, there's a place near me where bikes gather on weekends. Love that. Um, Perkins at Bear Mountain in New York. It would be nice if you could submit this. So um, create a community for Perkins at Bear Mountain or whatever that group is. Um, and then people can find it on the map in this way. Um, you can put the details in that community that say, hey, we meet up, you know, every Sunday and we go for a two hour ride, you know, whatever it is, put the details in there. Um, people can find that community on the map. Perfect. What else we got? Show us how to download a map for offline. Let me stop this. It's going to go in order now. Delete. Come on, click. We're going to go into map settings here. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then you'll click add offline map region. You have to do this in chunks. It's the chunk that's shown here. You can adjust the zoom level by the slider. Um, if you want granular detail in a smaller area, you would zoom further in. Um, once you're ready, you just hit download, boom. And then you'll enter the map name. And then it'll download that section. Do um, you want to talk about predictive caching real quick? Sure. <clears throat> um, so predictive caching is something that Rever is going to do anytime you're riding, either if you're if you're following a route or if you're just recording in Rever. Um, so what predictive caching is is as you're progressing on your ride, we're going to be trying to guess where you're going. Um, and save map tiles ahead of your ahead of you. Um, so if you run out of cell phone service or whatever, um, ideally Rever will have already captured that map tile and you'll be able to continue to navigate. One nice thing is if you're using follow route line, even if you do lose um, sight of the map, the route line will always still be there. Um, so hopefully, you know, if you get to an intersection, it'll be pretty clear based on the route line and your current position, um, what direction you need to go. But as long as you're not out of cell phone service for, you know, hours at a time, predictive caching should have already grabbed the map um, ahead of you arriving. Yeah. And if you're like, you know, you're going to go out of cell reception in a certain area and you have the map style on that you're going to use, like go zoom, pan, look around, um, and that will cache it too, outside of just when you're riding. Um, someone asked, can you navigate with North up? Um, you can click this compass. Oh, sorry. I'm not showing. Um, if it's not North, correct. Cause this will follow along and this will stay North, I believe. Um, but it may not default that because it'll auto snap back. Yeah. You can kind of view the map with North up. Uh, but when you start moving, it's going to auto zoom and go direction up. Um, while riding a route with turn by turn, how far off of the route can you go and then backtrack to the point and continue the ride? Um, you can go off the route, um, but if there's a waypoint that it's looping you back to, um, it's going to just continue to say that. You can just hit mute um, and and just go ride and then you can come back, but it's always going to default to your next point. Um, until you achieve that point and go through it, it's going to route you back there unless you skip that. Um, Kyle, is there an easy way to download a BDR track using Reverend Seed on the Garmin? Um, yeah, it, you export the GPX file. Um, although what I would recommend um, in the case of a Garmin, just go to the BDR website and export the whole GPX file. Um, you can get all that on your Garmin. Uh, it's nice to be able to use the tools that we have on Rever while you're navigating. Um, one thing that I've used in the past and one thing that's uh, bit somebody who wasn't using Rever on a BDR is we were using Live Ride, so I can kind of see um, where everybody else is if we're separated, as long as you have cell service. Um, 
one of the guys I was riding with wasn't using Rever, had downloaded an old GPX file of the Oregon BDR and actually got separated from us because he didn't use Rever. I didn't know where he was on live ride. Um, and yeah, luckily we, we met back up in sisters, Oregon, but <laughs> it, you can see how it, it can be kind of a safety thing. And it's nice if everybody's using Rever, you can see where they're at. Um, and then you all know you're on the same track too. Yeah. Why don't you explain a little further what live ride is? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I didn't really, um, pitch that very well, but live ride is one of our safety suite features. And, um, as you add friends into Rever, you do have to go into profile and pull up the live ride screen and you can select show friends on map. Uh, they would have to select show friends on map as well. Um, and then you can see where each other are at and it does update as you move along. There can be a slight lag, but usually it works pretty well if you're on a group ride and part of the group is up ahead at the coffee shop. You can see where they're stopped um, or maybe somebody took a wrong turn. Again, you do have to have cell service. So as long as you've got a little bit of a, a um, signal, you should be able to see where people are at. You can even click on them and get directions to navigate to them. Well, how old cool. 14 hours. <laughs> um, does live ride require everyone has a rever subscription? And if yes, does it require pro? Um, live ride would require someone to have a rever account. Um, showing friends on the map is a free feature. Um, so you don't have to have pro to, um, show your friends on the map. You both have to have it enabled as Kyle said, um, but it is a free feature, but both people obviously have to have rever. Um, the pro features are share a link. So you can share a link, um, of your live location, that person. So say, I'm going out on a ride. I share a link to my girlfriend. Um, she has a link and then it shows where I've been and she doesn't actually have to have the Rever app. It just takes it to a page with your live location um, and shows you exactly where you've been. Um, and when you turn that off and then turn that back on, it'll just generate a new link. Um, and then this, whoa, sorry. Um, the send safety SMS. Uh, as soon as you hit record or ride it and hit follow route line or get directions, it'll send a text message. Um, I'll just do it here. Oh, no, I have do not disturb on. Um, but a text message will come in when I hit record that says, hey, Bjorn's going out for a ride. And then it'll include that live link as well. And you can set that message to whatever you want. So if you just want to add all your friends who should be riding with you, just say, sorry, suckers, I'm going for a ride or something like that. <laughs> and as soon as you hit record, it's going to let them know. And if you all have live ride enabled, then they can meet up with you. There you go. How well does Rever work in Europe and other continents? Um, works great. Um, we don't have as much ride content in other countries, um, but it does work work well. Um, I've used it in India uh, and New Zealand as well. So, well, that's I think that's the end of the the open questions. And in Mexico, yeah, nice. Yeah, and then also if you're riding in those areas, um, as as Kyle pointed out earlier user-generated content. Um, if you build a cool ride or go on a cool ride, um, please definitely submit that to us so we can add it to Discover and you know other other people can go enjoy it too. Oh, I think you, you might've got in just before the buzzer, Kyle. So um, it says, please demonstrate edit ride. And I think we can also go back and answer another question. Um, where somebody was asking if you're using turn by turn on a pre planned ride or, uh, a ride that you find in featured, um, how do you start in the middle of it? So let's find a featured ride. Um, we'll go and edit that and start from where you're at. 
or halfway through it. Sorry, I'll use my, my mouse now. And just while he's pulling that up, another way to start from where you're at on a planned ride with multiple waypoints, if you're using turn by turn, um, you can just hit the skip waypoint button until you get to the closest one to you. Um, but here's another way to change that route. All right, so three dots, the ellipsis here. Edit ride. Um, all the waypoints are listed up here. And you can maneuver these around by grabbing, clicking, and dragging. This is going to make it way out of order. Um, I can also delete that waypoint by just hitting the X. And maybe I don't need all these dang waypoints. And this is a route I found it in Discover. So um, you can do this with any ride. I can reverse it as noted before with this reverse button. What were you going to say? Is that going to change the ride in Discover? It won't change the ride in Discover. It'll just change it for yourself. And can you save the new ride for yourself as it as you changed it? No. No, you have to do that on uh, on the website. Um, this was like a user experience decision that we made, but we can always backpedal on any decisions. Um, just because we assume if you're on your phone, you know, editing a ride in real time, you're probably going to go ride it now. Um, <clears throat> so we just kind of tried to take a step out. If you're like on your bike, you know, with gloves on and you just got done screwing with these waypoints and now it's trying to get you to rename it or something. Um, so this is just for ease of use if you're out on the bike trying to create a ride on your phone um but maybe that's something we should revisit but you'll and once you start navigating it you'll have the track of your ride so you'll be able to tell where you actually went um if it's a ride that you created and you're editing it you can save a version of it so that you don't change your ride all right we're almost 20 minutes past past the hour, but uh, we're going to start wrapping it up. Uh, make sure you fill out that feedback form. Um, we really appreciate your guys' um, questions in here and engagement. It makes it more fun for us. Um, you guys are awesome, and I hope to see you on the, the open road or the trail sometime in the near future. Um, while we're wrapping this up, I'm going to just throw in uh, a couple pitches. Um, Next weekend, uh, if you ride dirt or even street, we're, we're hanging out in the desert um, at an, a little gathering called Dust to Dust. It's kind of like a, here are GPS coordinates and want to gather with some friends. And we're going to be out there in the desert riding motorcycles. Um, the website is dustedustadv.com. So if you're interested in that, uh, there's no fee, there's no sign up, there's no anything, um, but yeah. come hang out with us. <laughs> there's also no electricity or water, so. It's in uh, Swing Arm City, which is in Caneville, Utah, kind of near Lake Powell um, on the Hanksville Bullfrog side. Um, really rad, looks like the moon, um, pretty sweet spot. And then the other one, and I want to give massive kudos to Kyle on this one, but we just released a 40 minute film um, called The Great Northern Adventure Route. That route was a a ride that was submitted by a user in Rever um, through the submit a ride to discover feature. Um, it is a 1300 mile route that goes across Minnesota, Wisconsin in the upper peninsula of Michigan, similar to like a backcountry discover discover route. Um, but it's more, I would say it's very approachable as a ride and yeah, adventure ride. And that is, we went out there, we rode this route to scout it and vet it. And we made a 40 minute film. So check that out on our YouTube channel. Um, Great Northern Adventure Route or the NAR is that is what it is named for short. Um, but pretty cool little video that Kyle Kyle put together. Um, well, and kudos to Stephen who created the route. And seriously, you guys go check out the route. Check out the NAR ADV website to see the details of that. It's just a great example of what can be um, elevated on Rever. 
Um, so if you guys create routes like this and, and we can share them out there, you know, maybe we'll come and film the route and ride it with you. And who knows? Thank um, you guys so much. Like we genuinely love doing these and appreciate all the engagement and chatter in the chat and the Q and a section. Um, thanks everybody. I've got all I need. I'm going to end the call now, but, uh, we'll hopefully see you on the next one.